Just checking it. So we are live. Should come up any second on YouTube. Okay, great. Just checking it. So we are live. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Paul Edney. I'm the uh, VP of Marketing for Cordine uh, Aviation. I've got uh, Heather and Thomas here, who are uh, senior leaders at Cordine. Great support people. I will let them introduce ourselves. Before they do, I'm just going to let you guys know we're going to try and get this to uh, a 45 minute uh, webinar here. Um, so understanding you guys are, I'm sure, very bu busy people. Thanks for arriving. I can see lots of stuff happening already in the chat. Thanks so much for um, jumping on board with us already. Um, and uh, so we're going to aim for 45 minutes for everybody. And I also wanted to say that uh, we're going to be focusing on the Mac for this uh, audit. Um, a lot of the things that we're doing here, you can do on iOS and uh, Heather and Thomas will let you know uh, what you can do, especially with the smart groups that we're going to be using. All of those are available on iOS. And uh, I also wanted to say that, of course, our support teams totally here and available for you at all times. So if um, you need any help or questions aren't answered uh, that you needed in this uh, webinar, you can reach our support team uh, at support at uh, cordine.com or support.cordine.com. So uh, without further ado, I will uh, get going and uh, pass over to Heather and Thomas to introduce themselves. Heather, go ahead. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. It's great to see your comments coming through. I hope you're all taking really good care out there in this very, very, very strange time. Um, I have just a quick uh, overview for me. I've been with Cordine Aviation for seven years since 2013. I am a general aviation pilot with an instrument rating, and I love everything that has to do with aviation community and people, and I'm very happy to be here. Hi, everyone. My name is Thomas. I'm the manager of customer support here at Coradine. Um, I've been with Coradine since 2015, and I've been in the aviation field, mostly airline operations, for uh, before Coradine for about 12 years. So glad to have you here, and I hope we can show you some things that will help you make logging easier. Awesome. Okay. Do you want to fire away? Uh, we're going to start with you, Ray Thomas. Uh, we're going to start with Heather. Heather. Ah, bingo. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Go ahead. No problem. Um, I just want to reiterate that if for any reason you guys need to drop off early, um, this entire live broadcast is going to be available as a video on our YouTube channel afterwards. So you can always come back uh, when it's convenient for you and pick up where you left off. And to get us started, I'm just going to do a quick overview roadmap of this logbook tab in Log10 Pro on Mac. Um, and so at a glance to start on the, it's divided up into three sections over here on the left-hand side. Uh, at the top, we've got calendar groups, we've got currency and limits groups, and then smart groups underneath. Um, in the center view is where you're going to see the grid view list of all of your flights. Um, and this is essentially the logbook view that you're looking at as if it were your paper logbook. Um, but one fun thing that you might not know about is for these columns, you can click and drag them to any position within this grid view. And you can also click on the title of the columns to sort from ascending to descending order. So this comes in handy if you're wanting to look for something alphabetically or if you're wanting to see the greatest amount of time in a time column, you can scroll down to see greatest at the bottom or top, depending on how you have it sorted. And you can resort as needed. Um, the details that you put into these columns are stored in the background of this SQL database logbook. 
Um, and on the right hand details panel side is where we recommend going for quick data entry. Um, starting in the date tab, you can just tab down through the different fields and manually enter in your new flights. Um, this is also we, where we can go to make edits. Um, and it's organized into sections. So we've got a flight section on top, a time section, duty, crew, landings, operations, notes. Um, again, these are all completely configurable. And they're referencing, for the purpose of this audit, um, the most important part of our object tabs is going to be the types tab. Um, and what we're looking at here, when you enter in your types, um, in order to get the most accurate results in all of our logbook reports and summaries and just overall, is we wanna make sure that each of your types is assigned an engine type, a category, and a class. Um, one exception with this being simulator types, um, and, but we'll get into more details of that later. Back in the logbook tab, we are going to take a quick look at how we would recommend doing a batch edit. So one of the tools and features that Log10 Pro for Mac exclusively offers is being able to grab a number of flights at the same time. And I'm gonna start with just these flights for all of August. I'm gonna select one and hold down the shift key on my keyboard and select the last flight that I want to edit. And it looks like we've got some seat times in here. Let's say we meant to put all of these flights as SIC, um, and it looks like only some of them have SIC at this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into this SIC time field and click inside the box on the right-hand side and hit my space bar on my keyboard, and then that automatically filled in all of the entries with SIC time. Um, let's say that we're completing this audit and doing a bunch of things and we wanna be able to see which flights we have changed or manipulated. One of the really quick and easy ways to do that is by using this flag designator. Um, it's available as just a, an icon in the right hand details panel. And if we click on that, it adds a flag to these flights. If we did end up going through and uh, editing additional flights and then we wanted to go back and see at a quick reference again, which of those flights we have changed or which ones were flagged, we can now move into one of our most powerful tools on Log10 Pro, which is available for Mac and iOS, and that is Smart Groups. So to view all of these flights in a Smart Group, I'm gonna click on the plus button in the lower left-hand corner, opt to create a new Smart Group. I'm gonna call this Flagged Entries, and then we're gonna go into Notes, flag is checked. If I hit this OK button, we can now see exclusively this series of flights that we flagged and manipulated, and they're available for quick reference. Um, Smart Groups is going to uh, round out my quick explanation of my intro, and I'm going to hand it over to Thomas. Thank you all. There you go, Thomas, you're in. Thanks, Heather. Thanks. I want to talk about before uh, beginning any audit is that you should back up your logbook. Um, if you don't know how to do this, you can go to our website at support.coradine.com. You can scroll down to our backup and sync section. And here we have a list of various methods to back up on iOS and back up on Mac. Okay, so let's talk about some auditing tools and setup. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that your logbook is set up so that the data you're gonna be looking at is easy to read. So I'm gonna go into the preferences tab here and in preferences general, the what I wanna do in this tab is make sure that hours decimal is set. The reason I do this is because if you end up having to add up a couple columns or a few time fields, it's just a whole lot easier to do in hours decimal than it is in hours minutes. 
This is just for auditing purposes. You can go back and set it to hours, minutes when you're done, but just for auditing, it's just easier to look at your times in decimal time. I also suggest having two decimal places checked. It's more accurate. You're gonna get up to the minute precision with two decimal places, whereas single digit uh, hours decimal has a rounding variation in it. The next thing I would suggest for a setup is to go into the time tab and turn on all the fields that you have ever logged and that you, you want to look at in your audit. Um, just for a general example here, I'm going to say that we're going to turn on PIC, SIC, dual received, and P1US if that's applicable to your flying. I also suggest turning on the simulator time field because that's a very important aspect of your logging too. And the other thing I recommend is that you turn off the autofill times. I suggest this because if you are going to be editing a bunch of times in your logbook, you do not want these autofill times to be populating automatically. If you look at cross country here, even if you have a time that's not set to display, but the autofill time is still checked, that time is still populated in the background. So you're gonna wanna turn that off too. You may have some other times that you wanna use for this aud your audit, but just for beginning examples, I'm gonna start with these four times. I think these four times are just the minimum level that you should always do. PIC, SIC, dual received, and P1 US. Going back into the logbook, uh, as Heather said, you can drag these columns left and right. So now I want to drag all my times that I turned on, and I'm gonna put them next to total time here. So I'm gonna drag PIC, I'm gonna drag SIC, I'm gonna drag dual received, P1US, and finally, simulator. So let's start looking at some times. Um, I'm, and we're gonna use some examples that have come into support. Um, by far, the biggest issue that we see when customers uh, have an issue with the report they ran or sometimes not adding up is the types tab not being filled in. So as Heather mentioned, the data in the types tab is very important to make sure that all this data is filled in that's applicable. If it's an airplane, you're gonna wanna make sure airplanes, category, the class of that airplane, and the engine type of that airplane. Log10 Pro keeps all these times in the background. So when you run a report and it populates multi-engine land or single engine land or turbine time, this is where it gets that data. So it's very important that all this data be filled in. If it's a simulator, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's classified as a simulator. We're gonna be looking at this a little bit more in some other examples. And we're also gonna share with you the methods that we use as a team to analyze some data. You can see I've expanded the smart groups down here. I'm actually gonna hide the limit and currency groups to make it easier to look at here. We've collected a group of smart groups that we use as a team, and we're gonna show you how we use these groups and what they're good for. I'm just gonna say right now, we're gonna put together an online article that has all these groups that you will be able to download later. We're gonna publish it later today. We're gonna to link to it and you're gonna be able to download these exact same groups that I'm using in this example. So let me go through these groups and show how they're really useful. Just a quick note to Thomas, just to add, let everybody know that those are all also available on iOS, as I mentioned at the beginning, so they work. Correct. Well. Yeah, everything, all these groups I'm showing you, you can download to iOS. You can do the same functionality that I'm gonna be doing, but um, it's just gonna look at the different layout Additionally, on iOS, they're gonna come across as separate groups. You can see on the Mac here, I've nested them so that you can collapse them very easily. 
but on iOS, they would download as separate groups, and that's fine. They would the functionality would be exactly the same. So here is a scenario where a customer wrote into support, and they ran the summary report aircraft type, and they were adding up their hours left to right, and they noticed that their piper time was not equaling total time. If you have a logbook that has thousands of hours or thousands of entries, it might be a little daunting, and I'll show you how you can use smart groups to get this data correct. The first group that we're gonna share with you here is total no seat. Now, if I open this group up, I'm gonna show you how this group is created. We have criteria here, five pieces of criteria. This group is gonna display any entry that has total time that's greater than zero, but P1 US is zero, SIC is zero, dual received is zero, and PIC is zero. Basically, this group is only gonna show you entries that have total time, but no seat time. I've also got it the display here as count of flights. So you can just take a quick glance and see this smart group has captured one flight that meets this criteria. If we look, we can see here is the flight. It has a total time of 2.30, but there is no seat time. So we can easily look at this flight. We can analyze it and decide what we need to fill in here. Let's say this has to be PIC. I'm just gonna put my cursor on the right side here into the PIC column. I'm gonna tap the space bar and it auto fills total time. You can see the second I did that, that group left this smart group. So you can easily reference these groups and see if there's anything populating. The next group I wanna look at is called no total and no sim. This is gonna show you any entries that do not have total time and do not have simulator time. This group is really useful for catching any entries that have seat time logged, but no total time. You can see here, this group has captured eight flights Seven of these flights, there's no issue at all because you can tell on the left column here that they're designated as a positioning entry, which is perfectly fine. They're not gonna have any time, but there is one entry flight here that does seem to be in air. It has PIC time, it has night time. It looks like this flight is just, it has out and in times. It looks like we're just missing total time. Now I can put that in and that flight is corrected. If you do log a bunch of positioning entries or other things uh, or other types of entry types that we have in the entry type field here and they pop up in this group, you can further customize your group to say, I don't wanna see all my positioning entries. So we can further edit this group to say, I want to take all these entry types, flight entry type is not positioning, and this group will no longer show positioning entries there. So those are two groups that we use a lot. And you can see we've already corrected one time error, two time errors with these groups. Now let's go and look at the seat times. These are very simple groups. All I've done is done time, PIC time is greater than zero. What we're doing here is we're looking at any entry that has PIC time greater than zero. And what I wanna do here is I wanna look at the total time column and I see it's 5158.88 and I'm looking at the PIC time column and I see it's 5158. 0.58. So there's a small error here. How do we find that? Well, this is where you kind of have to get down and just drill down a little bit. 
If you had a paper logbook, this would be an almost impossible error to find. But since you're using an electronic logbook, you can sort this in any number of ways. Um, what I like to do is use the fixed date range to narrow it down into years until I find where that error is. For example, we can see that my PIC time covers 2020. If I scroll down, it goes all the way down to 2007. You can use the fixed date range to do any number of years here. Let's just say I want to look at 2007 only. So now we're just looking at one year. And for speed purposes, the entry is in this first year. But if it wasn't, you would go on to the next year and the next year and keep going up until you can find the error. I know already that this error is in early 20, 2007. So I don't want to sit you, put you through going through all these years here, but um, I just want you to know that this may take a little bit of time. It may take you five minutes. It may take you 10 minutes. If you have a bunch of errors, this may take you 20 minutes, but once you do this, it's, it's good for you. Uh, you know, your logbook is good up to that point. So you only have to do it going forward. This saves you a bunch of time. I know that this error is in July. I'm gonna put July in here. And you can see I've got it filtered down to one month. And there's my error. So basically you drill down you do by chunks of years until you find the year. You do by chunks of months until you find the month. This is a way you can find little tiny errors that would be impossible with a paper log book. If you go down, you can do this for all the seat times. You can see SIC adds up. You can see dual received has an error. I've already filtered this to the point where the error is. And you can see that the air is at the very top here. We're going to correct that. Once you find the air, put it back to the dynamic date range. It'll go back to all the entries. And you can compare them and see that they all look good. Now we have a logbook where all these times add up. For PIC, I never put it back to dynamic. Let's put it back. All these times add up. So now we've just, in a 7,000 hour logbook, we have our times looking good. The last thing I wanna mention here is the simulator time field. This is very important, and I already saw some questions coming through that ask how to log simulator time. Well, you log simulator time in the simulator time field. This is a very important time field, and it's one that should be treated separately just like your other seat times. What are we looking for when we look at this? Well, we're looking to see that everything is logged in a simulator, which it is. And we're looking to see if there's any other times logged here. Is there PIC time logged? Is there SIC time logged? Is there total time logged? If there is, you may need to correct it. Maybe you want total time in your simulator time field. That's up to you. There's different ways to log simulator time. But this is just stuff you want to check. The other thing you're going to want to check with the simulator time field is the type that, that your sim time is logged in. You can see here that I have a bunch of time in an FNPT2, which is a simulator, an FNPT1, 
But I also have a bunch of time in an E145 in this logbook. If you go into the types tab, you can see the E145 is actually logged, entered as an airplane. So in essence, what this logbook is showing is that they have a simulator session logged in an aircraft. And if I filter by aircraft type, how Heather showed you, you can filter these columns. I see that we also have a B-190 that has the same issue. Heather's gonna go into this a little bit more later, but I'll show you real easy how you can correct this. You just wanna batch edit this by highlighting the, the entries you want edited and anything you enter on the right side will change anything in your log that, that is highlighted. So I wanna change the B190 to B190 SIM. I wanna change the, the Embraer 145 to E145 SIM. And I want to make sure there's no other ones. There's one other down here. change that to a sim as well. So now we've created three new entries that are now in our types tab. We've created three sim entries. You can batch edit the types tab just like you can the logbook tab. I can go highlight these flights. I can go to the category. I can change these to simulator. And now we've just edited this logbook. In just a few minutes, we found an entry that had total time with no seat. We found an entry that had seat time with no total time. We found a couple errors in just general logging and we've corrected some simulator entries. So using the smart groups and Logtime Pro is a really powerful tool and you can keep this, these groups. We're gonna let you download them as I mentioned later and you can reference them every now and then as and then you can keep on top of your logbook going forward it may take a little time to get these things down at first but then once you do that it should go very quickly afterwards uh, i'm going to let heather here expand a little bit more about how the types tab is very important and how it can affect your your logging great i'll switch over to heather's screen here we go boom and, um, oh, you need to unmute yourself heather right on all right Awesome, thanks so much, Thomas. Um, so I'm gonna dive into our second scenario here. Um, this logbook that I have loaded up was from a customer who wrote into us, they were Singapore based, and they had noticed that their multi-engine land time in a flight experience resume report was showing higher than their total time for their entire logbook. So to quickly illustrate what they were seeing, I'm gonna first make sure that I have this all entries calendar group selected and I'm gonna to go to reports or an experience. And it was from this particular report that they noticed this total here in multi-engine land 4170.65 was somehow inexplicably higher than total time of 4156.65. <clears throat> Ideally for this report, since we have these two classifications of uh, MEL and SEL, what we would want to see is this total added together with this total would equal total time. And in fact, at this time, when we manually add these together, it equals 100 hours more. So it equals 42, 56, 65. So we're going to go into the logbook and drill down to see if we can figure out where this overage might be. We're going to start with multi-engine land, and we're going to start by making a smart group to filter out just the multi-engine land entries. So I'm going to click on the plus button, select new smart group, we'll title it MEL. We want aircraft type class is multi-engine land. I'm going to hit OK. This is now going to show us all of the flights that are logged in an aircraft type that has been designated as multi-engine land. To further illustrate that specific multi-engine land time that's being reflected in the report, 
I'm going to enable an advanced time field from the preferences menu. So we're gonna go Log 10 Pro dropdown, preferences, time tab. We're gonna to go to the advanced section of that time tab and enable this multi-engine LAN time field. You can close this. Any new, as a quick side note, any new field that you enable, you'll be able to find in the grid view far right hand side. So I'm gonna go find this multi-engine LAN time field that we just enabled. I'm gonna click and drag it all the way over next to total time. And I'm going to expand the size of the field so I can see the full title. And a quick inspection here reveals exactly what we saw in the report. We've got an overage of MEL versus total time. Um, one of the first things we can do to see if we can eyeball and quickly find any sort of error is uh, sort by the total time. And we've got from least to greatest, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll all the way at the top and looks like we found at least most of our errors, which is that there are, select here, uh, if we look at the summary down at the bottom, there are 25 selected flights in which multi-engine land time is being counted and recorded because it looks like it has a couple of different aircraft types which have been designated as a multi-engine land classification, but no total time. So that would in fact equal a multi-engine land time that's greater than total time. Since I now, we now have some concerns about how potential simulator hours are being recorded, I'm gonna add an additional filter to this smart group to see all multi-engine land types that are also having simulator time and see if we can make an all-in-one correction. So I'm gonna double click in this group that we created, push on the plus button to add an additional criteria of time, simulator is greater than zero. And this is going to show us a total of 37 flights where we have simulator time and multi-engine land time. Um, in this case, we do get back, back in touch with a customer and we confirm that each one of these 37 flights uh, was indeed supposed to be simulator time. And we can see these bottom flights here also have total time, they have conditions of flight time, and they do also have some seat time in them in addition to that simulator time. So we're gonna go ahead and do a batch edit. So I'm gonna click on this first flight that has total time and hold down the shift key to select the last flight. And we're gonna very easily and quickly go through and just zero out these other time fields so that we're only left then with simulator time and the multi-engine land time, which we're gonna fix at the end. So clicking over on the right-hand details panel in the total time field, I'm gonna enter in zero Cross country is gonna be zero. IFR, actual instrument. There is no PIC time in here. Gonna zero out SIC. There's no dual received, but there is P1US. Gonna leave the simulator and we're gonna zero out night. Now, if we view our totals at the bottom of these columns, we've got only multi-engine land and simulator. The last step that we're going to do, since there are a variety of uh, types here that it, were logged as simulator types and were in fact simulator types, is we're just gonna key in a shortcut on the keyboard of Command A to select all of them. And then I'm going to go ahead and change all of these types to the A320 sim. Type that in, double click to select. So now these are all in the designated A320 sim type. However, the one last thing that we have to go through and fix is this multi-engine land time population. So in our types tab, we select this A320 sim and we can see it has been designated uh, with a jet engine type, airplane category, and MEL class. We don't need any engine type for a simulator. Category, we can change to simulator specific and class we also don't need. And now we have our type set up correctly. Um, to finish this and look at the report just one more time, we're gonna select all entries, report, flight experience, 
And now we can confirm multi-engine land is at 40, 50, 95. If you add the 86 hours of SEL into that, you're gonna get a total time of 41, 36, 95. And that is all for scenario number two. Unless there's any questions from that Paul has picked out or from Thomas, um, Thomas, take it away. One, one quick thing, Heather, that I think would be cool to show people, there's a lot of questions around just setting up um, syncing, and I just wanted to show where they can find that on Log10 Pro. Ah, yes, of course. So in the Log10 Pro preferences menu, we have our tabs up on top, and syncing is fourth from the right. And here we can see our different sync options. We can set none. I have my iCloud disabled personally for this computer um, or Wi-Fi as well. Great. And um, I will put into the uh, chat a link to our syncing um, KB article, which also takes you through. The other thing I would highly recommend for people to do if they are having syncing questions or, or issues is just to reach out to our support team. We got a lot of... Uh, um, well, what we call Jedi's on the uh, support team, and they will be able to help you for sure. So that's um, you can do that from Log10 Pro by clicking the help menu. I don't know, Heather, if you can just quickly show show them help and then contact support. You bet. So help drop down menu, contact support. We'll pre-fill your Cordon account email. You can type in a subject, and here's where you can put the body of your message. Um, if you are having questions about your logbook specifically, we do recommend sending in your logbook to Cordine for testing. We'll just help expedite that price process and we'll be able to have your logbook on hand and see the same things that you're seeing. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'll pass it over to Thomas and here you go. This is Thomas's screen now. You're up, Thomas. Okay, great. Thank you. So I was just looking at the comments and one of our eagle-eyed uh, viewers noticed that before when I changed the aircraft type of the simulators, it did delete the aircraft IDs. Uh, in the scenario that I was using, it was an assumption that it was just logged in the wrong aircraft and aircraft ID. However, if you have correct uh, simulator IDs logged in the aircraft ID column and you need to keep these, then the way that you would want to edit your simulator entries is within the aircraft tab. So let's say here that I want to edit my B1, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and do what I did last time just to show you what I'm talking about. So say I'm changing this to a, um, a, uh, a King Air sim. And you can see it deleted the aircraft ID. So let's say I want to keep the aircraft ID, but I need to change this type. So what we would do here is we would go into the aircraft tab. I can sort the types within the aircraft tab as well. And then for this aircraft ID, or in this example, simulator ID, I can simply change the type to whatever I need it to be. And then if you go back into your logbook, you can see that it changed all these types. Then you can see that in the types tab, you now have a new type. And then you can go back and do that, designate that as you need it to. OK, I just wanted to cover that real quick. That's one of the advantages to having a live webinar is the feedback. <clears throat> Let me take you through another scenario uh, that we get in support. And now that we've showed you how to look at your times, correct your times, and look at your types tab and correct your types tab, um, a lot of times we'll get people saying, I have an interview coming up and they wanna see all my turbine time. Or I have an interview coming up and they wanna see all my PIC turbine time. Or, I even get requests sometimes where people say, I have an interview coming up and they wanna see exactly when I reached 1000 hours of PIC time. So now I'm gonna show you how we can do that with the tools that we've already used. So we're gonna create a smart group 
and we're gonna look for turbine time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go engine, aircraft type, engine type. Now there's not gonna be any one engine type. We do have turbine as a general category, but there's also jet, there's also turboprop, there's turbofan, there's all sorts of ways that you can log your engine types in Log10 Pro. And we want this to be all encompassing of all turbines. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do this with two criteria. The first one is aircraft type, engine type, and I'm gonna use a little shortcut here. Begins with T-U-R-B, and that'll capture turbofan, turbine, turbojet, um, turboprops. It'll capture all of those. But what if you just have it labeled as jet? Well, we need to add another criteria. And we're gonna say aircraft type, engine type. And here's another shortcut, contains jet. This will capture jet or ramjet. Now there's one other thing you need to do with this group is you need to change the match from all to any. This is an important designation because when it's set to all, it's only gonna filter entries that meet all this criteria. So it would be looking for an entry that has both turbo as an entry type, as an engine type, and both jet. But what we wanna say is I want any, either this or that, and then it'll capture both and it doesn't have to have the other. So there we have our total turbine time now for this logbook is 49833. And if you can scroll down, you just do a quick type check and you're looking at the types and making sure there's nothing that does, shouldn't be there. Now, how do we get PIC turbine? Well, once you have turbine, it's very easy. It, if you control, if you hold control down while you click on any of these smart groups, you'll get a menu. And I like to duplicate groups where I'm using a lot of the same data. So now I have the, the group I just created and I'm gonna make this group turbine PIC. The only thing I'm gonna change with this group is the display option down here. I'm gonna say, show me all these turbine types and display PIC time. And now I have turbine PIC. So let's do my last scenario here where uh, a customer wanted 1,000 hours of PIC turbine. Well, how could we find that? Well, we could just take our turbine PIC group and we can use the fixed date range and we can start it whenever. <laughs> and then we can just find where we cross a thousand hours. So it's after 2014. Let's try 2015. It's right around in January 2015. I've already done this and I know that the entry is, oops, sorry, it's on the 8th. So I just went a few days until it crossed a thousand hours. And there it is at the top on this flight on January 8th, 2015, this logbook crossed 1000 hours of PIC time. And if you want to mark this in your logbook, there's multiple ways you can do this, but a quick little tool I want to show everybody is the custom checkboxes found in the duty tab of preferences. There's 20 checkboxes here. You can make and label anything you want. We're going to call this 1000 hours PIC. Now, 
now you can see I have a new checkbox here. I have the flight where I crossed 1,000 hours PIC. I'm going to check it. And then all that's left is cr to create a very simple smart group. where you can say, just show me the duty checkbox I just created. Duty 1000 PIC is checked. And there to show you the exact flight where you reached that point. So I just wanted to show you how you can use these smart groups for really useful uh, application and interview purposes. And I'm gonna pass it off to Heather to show you some other really useful batch editing features. Okay, Heather, you're on. Just to note for people, we are running a little bit over time. Uh, it's 9.45 now. I think we started a few minutes after nine. So if you do have to go, uh, please remember this is being recorded so you can definitely come back. Um, if not, please do hang out and uh, we're going to be here for a bit longer and can probably answer some questions afterwards as well. Fire away, Heather. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Thomas. Um, and thank you all for sticking around with us. Uh, the next scenario that we're going to present uh, was presented to us from a customer in the UK who was running one of our EASA reports and noticed that no time was being populated in the IFR time column. Um, I'm actually really excited to show you this trick that you may not know about running reports for a specified date, date range. Um, and it, Ideally, overall, if you wanted to run a report uh, with a specific date range, let's say just this year, and you wanted to see only totals for this year, um, what you would want to do is create a group that reflects the date range of the flights and totals that you want to see, and then select it. So I would say, or let's pretend that we just want to see the last 12 months in, instead of just this year. So the last 12 months, if I select this group, and go to the reports, we're gonna select Europe and we'll try this EASA Compliance 16 report. I can double click on it. And once the report is run, we can see that for totals this page and totals from previous page, there's no balance being brought forward. So this is one of the ways to view uh, hours and totals and flights exclusive to a particular date range. Uh, uh, contrary to that, if you wanted to see a particular date range, but you wanted to include your previous hours, there is a way to do that. And with the all entries calendar group selected in the reports tab, there is a further criteria that you can add down here. Instead of all data, we can select here's just this year, or we can also do last 12 months like we did earlier. So we'll do last 12 months and it will auto populate the date range starting and ending. And if we select generate report, it's going to run through for just a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. And once that is finished, we will now be able to see that there are total from previous pages. So a couple different ways to run reports for a specified date range here. Um, in particular, for this question, it is section 9 that they were looking at with this IFR time column. And they were noticing that for all of their flights, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom for totals, there were no values being populated for this time column. Um, so after a little bit of research and questioning, we found out that the pilot was logging their IFR time in the actual instrument time field. So we are going to find this actual instrument time field and notice that for the total of 230447, they wanted, in fact, to move all of these numbers over into IFR instead. Um, for quick reference, I'm going to create a smart group to isolate all of the flights with actual instrument. And so we're going to say time actual instrument is greater than zero. And this is going to prevent. For me personally, any potential um, accidental manipulation of flights that I don't want to change. So now I have these 1,863 flights 
that have actual instrument time in them that we want to move over to IFR instead. One of the first things I'm going to confirm is that the time in the actual instrument field is matching the total time, and it is. We're going to move IFR over as well. And now, that shortcut that I mentioned before, we can select A flight and then key in Command A to select all of the flights in this group. I'm going to move over to the right-hand details panel in this IFR time field, and I'm going to tap on the spacebar. It's going to think for just a second, and then it's going to fill in all those values. If I navigate back to the group, we can now see and confirm that the total IFR time of 2304.47 is matching total time. And now we can do one more quick batch edit, Command A to select all. I'm going to put my cursor in here and tap in zero. Actual, and that's going to remove all the flights from that group. Then to wrap up the entire scenario, we're going to go back. Let's just pick a sample data. Let's do for this year. That'll make the report go a little bit quicker. And we're going to check one more time to make sure everything's populating correctly. And we see right away times in the IFR time column. And down at the bottom, we've got the total that we are expecting. Um, let me see, I believe that concludes this scenario, unless there are any questions. Thank you guys very much. Just a quick one, um, Heather, because I think you can have a look at it. I just think we had one question around SIM, SIM and SIM types. I just think it would be good to do a very quick uh, review in the types tab of how we, um, how we set up SIM, SIMs. For people, I, I can't remember whether this logbook you have has SIMS in it, but <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah, of course, not a problem. Um, let me t set up a quick smart group. There's also a shortcut. If you right click on smart group title, you can create new smart group and we'll check and see if there's any simulator entries in here, or at least entries with simulator time. So we'll select time simulator is greater than zero. And what have we got? We've got 49 flights with simulator time. It's all the way over here. And the way that we like to recommend setting up simulators just in general is twofold. Uh, so in addition, in addition to the simulator time field that Thomas mentioned earlier, where you want to fill in your actual simulator time, for these types, let's select this uh, DHCAD type. We want to make sure, above all, that the category for the simulator is set to simulator. There's a couple other options. Um, there's also training device and PCATD. Those that will populate most of the simulator time columns and reports and summaries. Um, but at least making sure that one of those three is selected for your simulator uh, type is important, and also that it's not set to have an engine type or a class that's uh, MEL or SEL. And, and another very quick question that we had come in, uh, if you're using multiple simulators, but they're all A320, A320s, you would, uh, I mean, you, I guess you could log them as separate, um, separate devices, I guess, but uh, do we suggest that or suggest that they all go under one uh, A320 sim? Uh, I would, Defer to the customer, it really just depends on how you want to see that reflected and how you want to keep those records logged. Um, so you can certainly have more than one A320 simulator type. You can call it A320 sim number one or some other designation. Um, but as long as they're all set up to be simulators and you're logging simulator hours, then it will, it will work as expected. Perfect. Thanks a lot. And do we have one more, Thomas, or is that, are we done and we can, where are we? <laughs> uh, I think I think uh, I just want to wrap up a couple things here, but just to okay. go back to the sim question, um, I think it's important to note that you can log your sims the same as you log airplanes. So just like you log different aircraft IDs for an A320, you can log different sim IDs for an A320 sim. So there's no difference in actually logging your sim sessions uh, for aircraft ID and type purposes. 
the only designation is in the types tab where you designate that type as a SIM or an airplane. But essentially, if you have different A320 SIMs, then you would just log it the same way you would and it, that you would log any other different uh, IDs under the same type. So um, it's it's just uh, just you know maybe just to clarify in case there was any confusion about that. You don't log it really any differently. You just designate it differently in the types tab. And then there was just one other thing, Paul. If you wanted to share my screen real quick. Um, there you go. I just want to go back and reiterate that um, these groups I created, PIC, SIC, dual receive, P1US, these were just simple groups for example purposes. Um, your logging may be different and maybe a little bit more complex, and you can totally customize these to suit your needs. Um, for example, if you're military, you may log PIC and SIC in the same entry. Um, or if you are um, a corporate pilot and you log all your entries in a day in a single, all your flights in a day in a single entry, you may have PIC and SIC in the same entry. Um, if that's the case, then you may need to, let me go to a different logbook here. You may need to add up your PIC and SIC columns to make sure that they equal total, or you could even create uh, a new one you can isolate PIC by excluding all SIC time, as I'm doing here. This is this is a logbook where there are some entries where PIC and SIC are in the same uh, entry. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying PIC is greater than zero, but SIC is zero. And now you can see I've excluded all SIC from this filter, and then I could easily just create a separate group that only looks at PIC and SIC simply by changing this to show them both. And now I've only got entries which have both and this would make it very easy just to add these up and make sure they equal total time. Obviously you would do the same for SIC here. So you can take these groups and customize them to your flying. We couldn't. We obviously can't go through every example, but um, I just want to say that once you find the the way that it works for you and displays the, the times the way you want them to display, it's just a really way to reference these and continually going forward and keeping on top of your logbook. The other thing I want to reiterate is that the article we're going to link to later is uh, just a quick reference handbook for all the tools we've been talking about in this discussion. There's gonna be links on backing up. There's gonna be links about how to enter balance forwards, entering simulator entries, customizing your logbook, batch editing, how to use smart groups. And then you're gonna be able to download those groups that I showed you from directly within this article. Again, we're gonna link to it later. I know there's a bunch of questions that came through about syncing and things like that. Obviously, that's kind of a different uh, webinar, and um, but everybody can contact us directly. Our support staff is here uh, for issues that are more specific to syncing and stuff like that. It's better to handle one-on-one. -on -one. So I just wanted to follow up with that. Great. Cool. So we, um, I got a. One question in here about uh, activating the NOTAMS feature. I'm not quite sure what they're referencing there. Um, is that NOTAMS within the preferences? Because there is a, uh, Heather, if I share your screen, is there a, um, in preferences, is there, well, there's a notes section you can add in. Um, in terms of NOTAMS on iOS, you can see that in the help, uh, not in the help menu, sorry, in the, uh, more uh, menu at the bottom, and the notams that come from Coridine come in there. <clears throat> what do you mean the top right notams? That that's automatically set up, isn't it, Heather? Sorry, you're on. Mute. There we go. Um, so yeah, if if they're talking about notams uh, over here in the upper right hand section. If you're not receiving any NOTAMs, I think it's been a while since we've published any, 
Um, if you've never received them, you may want to check your um, system preferences uh, or your iOS system preferences on Mac or iOS to see if uh, Logtone Pro is allowed to receive notifications. Um, so we have the Notums system over here, and then there's also a separate notifications that you can set up to alert you uh, to be reminded of important events. So expiring certificates, future flights, future duty periods, those can all be set up within the preferences in Logtone. Great, thanks. Um, we just had something which we'll have to probably take into engineering. I'm seeing a question around uh, um, when they're pulling entries from their roster, uh, it's performing a backup every time. Uh, so apparently they have hundreds of backups. I would actually suggest, I think this is moment please, um, that you reach out to our support team on that one. Uh, and I'll just put up our support um, banner here so you guys know where to go. It's pretty straightforward. So you can either go to support.cordine.com or uh, email us at support at .com. Of course, you can also do it from in the app. So uh, in, in the Mac, you would go to the help menu at the top, maybe Heather, you could just show that and then click contact support. Is it Heather's screen we're seeing? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, there you go, contact support, thank you. And then in on iOS, you can go uh, tap the more at the bottom right and then help and then contact support. Uh, and see if we've got any more questions here. All right. So yeah, there. Uh, this is video soul three. Yeah, we we don't send a lot of notums out um, because we don't want to uh, bug people. <laughs> so uh, that may be why your notums are are blank. We only send them out when there's news to tell that's uh, important news, and obviously they get cleared uh, as well. So you won't, um, you may not see a lot a lot there. Um, as I say, we only put notums out when it's really uh, something that's of high value. All right. Um, da -da. Oh yeah, I had the question around uh, from Alex around um, logging augmented hours. Um, so his, so if there's more than two pilots in the plane and they um, have to rest on long trips in the bunk, um, could you guys, is there, I don't know if you're set up to answer this question. I don't want to kind of put you on the spot, but if, if there is a, an answer you can give, that'd be great. Let's see for augmenting hours. Thomas, did you want to take a stab at that? Or personally, I would want to get more details and see if we can figure out exactly what we're looking at and well, what you'd like to see. Go ahead, Thomas. I could, I, yeah, if you want to share my screen, I could just point out the relief uh, fields real quick. Okay, hang on. I'm just going to get rid of this uh, banner here so that people can see your screen in full. There you go. Fire away. Okay, so let's say uh, recently we added the relief function to Log10 Pro, and this can be found in preferences time relief field. And if if the question is pertaining to um, how to log long haul and rest periods, then this is how you would do it. Um, so let's say you had a 14 and a half hour flight. And let's say uh, you have PIC set to autofill. I don't have it set right now in this example, but um, so here we have total time 14 PIC, 14 and a half. We have the relief function here, and all you have to do is enter your rest time in this field, and it will automatically. Well, I have to turn this on. If you go, sorry, this is the this is the problem with going live. If you go into preferences, you also have to activate. It should be by default, but deduct relief from total time in preferences. So anything you enter in your relief time will automatically deduct that rest time from total time, and it will deduct any of the seat times you have logged as well. So 
This is a really powerful feature for any long haul crews. All you have to do is know how much your rest was and just enter it in the relief field and it will automatically go through and adjust your total time. I'm not sure if that's exactly what you were looking for, but um, if it's if that's not, then you can. I would encourage you to reach out to our support staff and we could handle it one-on-one. -on -one. Great. Uh, thanks. I mean, we don't have any other questions that are jumping up. We had a ton of chat, so please accept my apologies for anybody I I missed. Um, but uh, we're we're over an hour now, and um, I think uh, and there's no other questions coming in right now. So maybe we'll uh, end the broadcast, and of course, this will be available for everyone um, to come back and review. And we will also be sending out a link to the article that Thomas um, uh, mentioned. Uh, oh, I have one more question. Come in. <laughs> We'll keep going. Um, <laughs> so uh, how do I set up a category for seaplane if I have two different types of aircraft that I've flown? Yeah, so uh, I don't know if you're still showing my screen. Uh, no, I will now. Yep. So okay. Now. So uh, if you have, let's say, let's make a new type here. Let's call it uh, C-172, I don't know. Seaplane, we have, it's an airplane, but we have, mul we have all the classes here. So you could set it up as a single engine C. Um, basically Logtem Pro is loaded with the, most of the usual class and category identifiers. So we have single engine C and we have multi-engine C. So you would just make a new type and then you would designate it as either one of those. If I could quickly expand on that as well, if you have a plane that uh, has either like removable skis or floats, sometimes it's uh, a land-based, sometimes it's, it's sea-based, um, what we would recommend would be setting up two separate aircraft ID, just so you can keep those hours separated um, and easily identifiable, even though it is the same plane, um, what you would need to do is just add in an additional designation into the aircraft ID that would say, this is the 172 when it's got floats on. Right, so uh, as Heather was saying, thanks Heather. Mm -hmm. So here I have two types. I have a 172, which is a single engine land. And then I have a 172 C plane, which is a single engine C. And then you can fill out this engine type here. And now you have your two designations that you would need. Uh, Heather also mentioned things like floats. Sometimes it's not technically a class of a single engine uh, C. Um, sometimes it's very specific to the aircraft. If, if you go into the aircraft tab, we have different designations, which you can, which are specific to the aircraft ID. So we have amphibian, floats, skis, or skids. So you can further customize your aircraft IDs by these categories. Yeah, we also had a question um, in terms of digitally signing every page of a report um, that uh, CAA accepts electronic report, but it requires signature on every page printed. I don't believe at this time we, we do that. Is, that. is that correct, Thomas? We can do it via a custom report, and we actually have an article on our website that shows how to uh, customize your specific report to put your signature at the bottom. It's not a feature within the app, but it is possible if you know how to use custom reports. Okay, cool. Um, that, and I would suggest actually to Sasan, I think who that question came from, if you reach out to our support team, I'm gonna put the support link back up here. Um, then uh, we can help you with that for sure. And Paul, I also sent you the link to that specific knowledge base article if you wanted to pass that along. Uh, okay, here we go, yeah. I'm gonna just copy that in so then I can send that. Here's the link to the to 
And Thomas, we're still seeing your screen. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, so, oh, I see. Question about uh, earlier entries. Is it possible to expand the years and months on the apps? Because currently only the four latest years or most recent, I guess? Yes, there are is. Available. Can, Heather, I, I think I've got you on screen. So this is Artem, your answer to your question. You bet. Um, so if I'm understanding correctly, we're looking at the calendar groups. We have all entries, early entries, and then it looks like it's showing the last four years of entries. And this can definitely be customized to show uh, any number of years that you choose. So if we go into the Logtime Pro drop-down menu, Preferences, in that General tab, we can show calendar groups for most recent 10 years, let's see what that does. And now we've got 2020 all the way back to 2011. Um, you can further customize that to, to further define. And then when you uh, expand any of these years, it can also show broken down into months, which is very helpful for auditing purposes as well. Great, thanks Heather. Hopefully that answers your question. Oh, we had a question from uh, David around what uh, P1 US is. Maybe Thomas, you can answer that. <laughs> You need to unmute your mic, though. Yeah, P1 US is, uh, it's not really used in the US, the United States so much, but it is very common in internationally. Um, sorry if that's a bit ethnocentric, but um, the uh, it's just it's just under supervision. Uh, PIC, it's also called PICUS, so PIC under supervision, or PIC can also be called P1, so P1 US. Uh, they're both the uh, synonymous terms. Great, thanks. Hopefully that answered your question, David. Any uh, any other questions out there? Thanks so much for those who've uh, stayed and are hanging out with us. <laughs> uh, but feel free to uh, head off whenever and I'll just wait for another minute or so and see if there's any other questions. But uh, really appreciate you all being here with us. It's awesome. Great, thanks everybody. Perfect. All right, well, nothing else coming in, so I'm gonna end the broadcast and, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more. <laughs> well, we got a question around iPad users and a webinar. Uh, we definitely, we're gonna be sending out a, a, a um, we wanted to focus on the audit side of things because we are we had a lot of requests for um, people to who needed help in the current uh, COVID situation. So we decided to focus on the audit at first, but um, definitely are interested in uh, getting uh, feedback on um, what you'd like to hear. And I can see that there's requests for an iPad, iPhone uh, webinar as well. So that's great. Um, and we'll take note of that. Uh, really appreciate everybody being here. And uh, as was just put in the chat, stay safe, everyone. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll all be through this uh, situation soon. All right, thanks a lot. And I'll thank Heather and Thomas. You guys are awesome. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Take great thank care. Thank you. Heather. All right. Bye, everyone. Off we go. Cheers. Cheers.